This is rough. Of all the videos I imagined writing and recording, this was nowhere close to being on my radar. Late Wednesday night, after I left work, I learned that my alma mater, Coyle Cassidy High School, is closing at the end of the academic year. I was already planning to do a video to help students adapt to online learning, but considering most of my audience is Coyle students and faculty, I feel that this is my opportunity to offer my assistance in this difficult time. First, it's okay to be stunned, confused, and have very strong feelings about this. Actually, I'd be kind of worried if you didn't. Whether you're a fifth grader or a freshman who's experiencing your first year at CC, a senior preparing for graduation and all the uncertainty surrounding that now, or a faculty member who has invested over 20 years at the school, it is reasonable and it is acceptable to be angry, sad, distraught, and to feel lost. These are already unprecedented, uncertain, difficult, and challenging times with COVID-19 forcing us to acclimate and adopt to a new way of teaching and learning. But now a part of you, a piece of your identity is being ripped away from you. I can't imagine the pain, sadness, confusion, frustration, and host of other emotions you're dealing with right now. But I can empathize that this must be an excruciatingly hard time for you and you may feel like you don't know what ended this up. One thing you may be tempted to do in tough times like this is to try to assign blame or figure out who's responsible. I'd like to discourage that for one simple reason. Assigning blame and responsibility won't bring us any closer to finding a solution to the problem at hand. Yes, I hope the administrators and decision makers will evaluate what led COIL and the diocese to arrive at this point in order to avoid similar situations in the future. But that's not our concern right now. As I sometimes say, that's above our pay grade. And right now, spending our time, energy, and resources on figuring out what went wrong doesn't do us any good. Whatever happened to bring us to this point is done. The decision has been made. Unfortunately, there's no changing that. Right now, we have to take care of ourselves and move forward. Your feelings are valid and they are warranted. It's important to give your emotions a voice and express them. Talk with your classmates, teachers, parents, and friends. Share your fears, your worries, and your concerns. You aren't the only one feeling this way, and together you can find better solutions. If you're feeling angry at someone, go ahead and write them a letter. Actually, physically write it out on a piece of paper. Say exactly what you want to say and get it all out. But don't send the letter. Instead, just rip it up or shred it. Paint, draw, play an instrument. Allow yourself to feel your emotions. Own them, name them, recognize them, and let them out. Give yourself the freedom to feel, but don't allow your emotions to consume you. Hide your true self and stop you from making progress. Schedule time today to fully bathe in and experience what you're feeling about this challenging situation. Go ahead, set a timer for 10 minutes and allow yourself to do whatever you need to do in order to get back to normal, to Feel whatever you need to feel. Rage with anger. Just do me a favor. Hide anything that can break or could hurt you. We don't want to actually cause any damage or hurt yourself or other people. Cry. Scream. Curl up in a ball. Deal with this how you need to deal. After the 10 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever you need is up. Give yourself 5 minutes to sit quietly and re recenter yourself. Now the difficult part and equally important part is moving on. Number one, finish strong. This academic year isn't done and it still counts. Hold your head up high, grit your teeth, focus your eyes, and get the work done. Teachers, be there for your students. Be there for your colleagues and please make sure to take good care of yourself. Students, be there for your friends and classmates. Be there for your teachers. Here's a secret. 
They care deeply about you and are worried just as much about your future as they are about their own. It's true that they call you their kids and they mean it too. Communication is so important. Parents, this is a time to put that macho bravado stuff on the shelf and be real with your kids. If you're sad or upset or confused, go ahead and tell them. That gives everyone permission to be real, to feel their emotions and to heal together. Number two, be selfish. As much as community and communication are important, I want to emphasize the need to be selfish when planning your next step. Selfishness is not something usually discussed in the same breath as the warrior way, where we're taught about the importance of service to others. But whether you're a teacher weighing your professional options or a student trying to decide your next step in this academic adventure, you have to be true to yourself and do what is in your best interests. Teachers, dust off those resumes and get them up to date because most schools have already posted their openings for next year or they will be posting them soon. Students, I want to challenge you to be painfully real with your parents and yourself and share your biggest goal or dream with them. Then work together to get the education and the skills you need to make that dream a reality. You're going to grow from this. We're all going to grow from this. Sometimes growth is intentional and by design. We set out to learn or achieve something and pursue it until the mission is accomplished, the goal achieved, the job is finished. Other times, like now, a challenge is set in front of us and whether we like it or not, it's our obstacle to negotiate. The funny thing about growth, whether intentional or unforeseen, is that it will push us out of our comfort zone, force us to face our fears and address our weaknesses. There's a reason they're called growing pains. Growth isn't easy and it's really comfortable. My best advice is to make the decision right now that you'll go out to meet the challenge that awaits you head on and aggressively pursue this change rather than passively let the changes come to you. Abraham Lincoln said, things may come to those who wait, but only things left by those who hustle. Maybe this means you'll have that tough talk with your parents that you want to be a nurse, a carpenter, mechanic, or plumber, and you want to attend a vocational school. Maybe it's proactively contacting other private or public schools to see what's the best fit and most reasonable fit for you next year. Teachers, maybe this means working in the public sector for a few years as you go back to school to pursue that degree in a profession that you feel will be more fulfilling. Or maybe it's taking that shot at that dream job you never had the courage to go for. Whatever it is, put your fears and concerns aside, meet the challenge at the door, and pursue your next step with 100% of your energy and a healthy dose of reckless abandon. Finally, I wanted to open up Good Wolf Project and myself to anyone who wants to share their story or talk about any concerns or fears you have. I know not everyone has a huge network of friends and colleagues to talk to. Sometimes we don't feel comfortable talking to our parents about what's going on. Bring it to the community and we'll help each other out. No one fights alone. Charge on you warriors. Fight warriors of coil. On to the battle with courage strong. For hearts so loyal cannot lose the fray. Be well. Do good. And making an awesome day.